turns going up and honestly i'm getting a little bit worried about what people are going to do next kelly and i are having people come up to us in random places that have no idea who we are in the grocery store in the big box store uh you know at uh, different outlets that we're going out to places that we're getting our preps done even just the beach or where we're taking our kids out and it's on every single person's tongue the economy is in shambles. They don't know what to do. Their rent is going up. We had one individual come up to us over the last uh, 48 hours, and she said that her rent was going up $300 to almost $2,000 a month. And for years, she had been able to get by without any problem. But at the same time, her gas has doubled. Her groceries have went up 40%. And she really doesn't know what to do next. So we have people who are having to change their entire lifestyle because this economy has been driven into the ground. We have a lot of other events happening around our world, including some major things in the USA that I want to get to today. The British defense minister or the ministry has said that Russia is likely to take full control of one of the opposition regions within two weeks. And NATO and uh, its allies are going to do everything that they can to supply the weapons and the tools necessary to keep Russia from continually gaining control in the conflict zone. What they want right now is for Russia to be uh, demilitarized by a proxy. They want all of their resources to be uh, used on the battlefield. You see, this is a larger game. They don't care about the individuals. They might tell you all day and night that they care about the Russian opposition, but they don't. All they want is Russia to be demilitarized through proxy. They want all of their weapons to be used, and then, they, and then Russia will have no ability to fight NATO, Western allies, European allies, or to back up China as China moves on Taiwan. Sweet and will send anti-ship missiles, anti-tank weapons, and 12.7 millimeter rifles, including ammunition, to the opposition. This is the fourth support package that includes financial contributions to the armed forces in that region. Biden right now is uh, blaming Congress for inflation. You see, there is some... All praises, honor, glory to our power, Yahweh. And his only begotten son, the redeemer of Israel, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah. His name is Yahawashai. Again, it is a pleasure to come to you, beloved of Israel. Shalom is your brother Malak. Today is Saturday, June 4, 2020. To the turning up of our Lord, our King, Yahweh Shai. Family, that's what this is all about. Is to glory, give glory to our power, Yahweh. Because he says, he says, let's go straight. Let's bring our precept before we open this lesson. Let's go to the book. The book of Isaiah 46. Isaiah, Isaiah 46, family, Isaiah 46, you know where I am going, family, this is about our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, Isaiah 46, verse, verse 9, 10, family, it says, remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh, and there is none else, I am the power, eh? and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying what? My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Family, let me hit you with another one. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's hear from his son, the redeemer of Israel, Yahawashai, the king of Israel. Israel, the redeemer of Israel. He's the one coming to get us out of this place, family. So let's hear it from his own mouth. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 18, it says here. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law 
till all be fulfilled. Everything said in this book is going to be fulfilled, family. Including the Third World War. Let me go to the book of Revelation. This is where my lesson is going to start. Revelation chapter 8. Verse 13. Family, it says here. Family, pay attention. Everything is going to make sense. But follow me here. Through the Spirit. It says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. Saying with a loud voice. Listen, family, this is the point. It says, whoa. 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 That is three woes. That is three world war. Family, the first world war was when? Was July. First of what? July 28, 1914 to November 11. 1918. That was the first world war. That came and passed. Which was also mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 9 verse 12. It says here. One war is passed and behold, there come two wars more after. Family, this book here. Family, you can compare it to any other book. It says Revelation 9. Family, everything that is happening is written in the book of truth. The word of our power. That's why we're here to glorify his name and give him glory. Because family, you know why? You can compare this book to any other book. That's the power that we serve. His name is Yahweh and his only begotten son, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai. Family, let me repeat this again. It's a Revelation chapter 9. Remember I told you the first world, world war came and passed. Which was also mentioned in the book. But here, family, here, this is it. Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. It says, one war is past. That is the first world war, which was July 28th, 1914 to November 11th, 1918. Family, you know how you see how beautiful this book is? This is the blueprint for us. Family, we are not depending on these nations anymore. The Lord opened our eyes and he's speaking to us. The prophets are back. All praises, honor, and glory to our power. And it says here, Revelation 9 again, verse 12. It says, one war is past and behold, there cometh two wars. More after. The two war oh, family, the first world war came and passed. The second world war, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 11. Family, verse 14. You see how these things work, family? Everything is written here. Remember, beginning of this, I opened up with what? Three woes. Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. I said what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's three world war. I gave you the first world war. Now I'm about to give you the second world war through the spirit. In Revelation chapter 11. Verse 14, it says, the second war is past, and behold, the third war cometh quickly. We don't have the date for the third world war, but it is coming. But family, the second war was what? The second world war was what? September 1st, 1939 to September 2nd, 1945. Family, go through all these nations and their gods and their books, their religious books, and tell me who can, who can talk about prophecy. Who has everything that's happened right now? Show me in those books, family. That's why we're here to lift up the name of our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, the true power of the universe. Revelation chapter 11, verse 14, it says, The second war is past. Family, I just told you when the second world war is. Was. It was September 1st, 1939 and September 2nd, 1945. That is the truth. The word of the truth. That's why Yahweh Shai says what? Not one jot of this, uh, this world is going to pass away. It says everything has to be fulfilled. Everything written in the book is going to be fulfilled. He told us about the woes. 
The third world war family, the first came, the second came. Now the third, as we patiently wait for the third, because it is coming. Because Yahweh Shai told us, not is the Lord faces, all his counsel shall stand. Everything that he has written is the, in the book, it's going to stand. And his only begotten son, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, also said, not one, not one. Let's go to the book of Matthew again. So family, you know what I'm saying. Matthew chapter 5 again. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 18. It says, For verily, this is the word of the king of Israel, Yahweh Shai. I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all the all be fulfilled family it is gonna come it says the vision the vision the vision the vision you know family they, they just drop in my spirit let's go to habakkuk chapter 2. verse 3 says the vision is yet for an appointed time family the vision the prophecy but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry it says wait for it because it will surely Come, it will not tarry, family. You heard from the guy's mouth. They want to push Russia to the brink. This is the Lord's doing. Eh? We told you about the first war. We told you about the second war. We know the third war is coming. Because we know that in that midst of that third war, the king of Israel is going to pop up. Because he says it. Family, we're going to bring the precepts. Because family, we have receipt. Eh? I can go into the store and say that I'm returning this without my receipt. Sometimes they will give you your money back. But family, we everything that we bring, we bring to you, we show you the receipt. Thanks to the Most High for giving us the eyes of that family. When we see this news, we can filter it through the precepts. All praises to our power. It's all about prophecy. It says the testimony of our Lord is what? Let's go to Revelation chapter 19.10. I, I believe that's what it is. Revelation 19, is it 10? Yes, all praises to our power. It says here, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. It says here, Worship the Most High. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. That's what we are doing, family. It's all about prophecy. The same way Jeremiah, Isaiah, Malachi, Jonah, ne, 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 uh, uh, Jonah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Ezekiel family, they all prophesied about the salvation, the coming, the second coming of the king of Israel. This book here, this is all about Yahweh Shai. It says, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It's coming for his people. But all these things have to happen. He told you, it says everything has to be fulfilled. So the prophecy, testament, giving out, telling people before it happens. Family, that's prophecy. When we go through the news, family, we filter everything through, through, the, the, through the book, through the precepts. All praises, honor, and glory. And that's the gift. That's a gift that the Lord has blessed us with. To warn his flock, his sheep. How much I said to Apostle Paul, he says, uh, uh, he says no, it's also to Peter. My poor apologies. He says, Peter. You love thy me? He says, do you love me, Peter? Just paraphrase it. He didn't even say it once. He said it three times. He goes, Peter, if you love me, do what? Feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. This is the love that the Most High have for us. Family, this word here that I'm, I'm bringing out in the name of our power, Yahweh Bahashem, it is for the elect. Not everybody is going to accept this. But the elect, they're going to take it in. They're going to soak it in. Because this is, for the, the, this is salvation for you. He said, don't let the incredulity of, of them trouble thee. He says what? Incredulity meaning the unbelievers, family. He says, they shall die in their unfaithfulness. That's why it says this here is faith. It says what? The just shall live by faith. Let's go to the article, the first one. Family, I have a few of them. We're going to fly through them. But family... When it's all said and done, I hope you are edified. This should comfort you. You know why? Because family, this is the blueprint of everything that is happening right now. This is fulfilling prophecy. 
It says Russia threatens to strike the West if U.S. supply rockets rockets hit its territory. Sorry, let me read that again. Russia threatens to quote strike the West end end of quote if U.S. supplied a rocket hit its territory. So it is coming. Family, it's if it's written in the book, and Yahweh Shai told us that every single thing that is written here is going to be what? Fulfilled. Family, I trust Yahweh Shai than I trust anybody else. That's my trust. My trust is in the most high Yahweh, the creator of the heaven and his only begotten son. And that's where it ends. That's it, family. Don't put your trust in no man. Put your trust in no man. Not your wife, not your children. Not your past. Put your trust in our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. He's the one that put you here. He's the one that woke you up this morning. He's the one that put his breath in you. It's a following. This is from a zero edge. This is today. It says, following on the heels of the Biden administration announcing it will send longer range rocket system to Ukraine, the Kremlin has issued a veiled threat that if its territory is hit, it could strike back directly at the West. I said, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Third World War is already started. Oh, yes. They can't do anything about it. Because this is the Lord's movie. He wrote the script. And he blessed us with the blueprint to warn his people. To tell them the time that we are in. This is not the time to be playing with your life. Because he tells you that I come like a thief in the night. Because if, it's a, if a thief is going to tell you that he's coming at 2 o'clock this morning, family, he's not a thief. He's warning. He, he's not a thief. A thief surprises you. Yahweh Shai is coming when people are busy partying and doing all sorts of nonsense. That's when you're going to be surprised. He is coming. He's, gonna, he's told us again, it's going to be just like the days of Noah. They will be given in marriages, clubbing, eh? continuing with their wicked lifestyles. And then the sky is going to be open. Oh, yes. And this time, family, it's not going to be water. It's going to be fire. Mm -hmm. It's going to pass over the elect, meaning they're going to beam, them, uh, beam the elect into the chariots. And then he's going to bring down the fire. I don't know about you, but I don't like heat. Not that kind of heat. But that's why we're here to warn you. That's why he blessed us with this word to warn his people. Yahweh Shai said it three times. He goes, Peter, please feed my flock. If you love me. This is the love that he has for his people. Particularly the elect of Israel. One of the president's Putin's closest allies has warned that Moscow could target Western cities if Ukraine uses rocket systems supplied by the United States to carry out strikes on Russia territory. The UK Times is reporting the dire warning was given by close top Putin ally and former president Dmitry Medved who currently serves as the Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Family. I will put this link in the description box. The family, I want to show you something. This is from RT. This is the same thing that was quoted by Medved. Medved was the former president, but now he's a high-ranking, uh, I think, Minister of uh, Security. I can't remember his exact title. But here, anyway, let's read. This was yesterday. This nuclear war can't be ruled out. Ex-Russian president says, issuing a stark warning, Dmitry Medved said anyone must work to prevent the end of humanity. The family, the end of humanity was already written in the Bible. You see, they don't have control over what is going to happen. 
That's why I said, don't put your trust in no man. Yahweh said he was gonna, he's going to do all his counsel. Yahweh Shai told us again, it says not one. Everything written in this book is going to be accomplished. John the Revelator gave us in Revelation chapter 18, sorry, chapter 8 verse 13 says, Whoa, 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 the third world war, that's it, that's end, that's the end of it all. The prophet, what is it called? Joel told us in the book of Joel chapter 3. Or chapter 2. I'm, I, I could be 2 or 3. Family is in the book of Joel. The war of Armageddon. Family, no matter what they are saying here in this article, they can say all they want. But it is written in this book. So it is going to happen. The third world war is coming. That's why I'm here to tell you through the spirit that yes, the third, it's just a matter of time. It's going to be full blown. Right now, it's already started. Because they're using Ukraine, 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 Ukraine. They promise Ukraine long range missiles. And Ukraine said, oh, they're not going to uh, send it to Russia. This is before they made that promise. And then within 24 hours, they said nobody can tell them how they use those missiles. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to escalate. Family, let's read a bit of this article. Here it says, former Russia president. Dmitry Medved has said that nobody should forget about situations that could force Russia to use nuclear weapons, but also stress that no one wants nuclear war. It is not up to you, Medved. It's not up to you because the Lord already has written the obituary of this world. You see, that's what the blueprint gave us. We he told us this from the beginning. Before it is happening, he told us about it. Family, that's the power that we serve. His name is Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. It says, since the launch of the Russian military offensive in Ukraine in late February, relations between Moscow and the West have soared to the lowest level. Sorry, lowest levels in modern history. Russia has repeatedly warned the U.S. as its allies that sending more weapons to Ukraine wrecks direct confrontation between Russia and NATO. In an interview with Al Jazeera, Medvedev, who currently serves as deputy chair of the Russia, sorry, that, so this is his title, family, deputy chair of the Russia Security Council, said that while he doesn't want to scare anyone, let me just hold, listen to this, while he doesn't want to scare anyone when people say that something is impossible because it is never possible, they are always wrong. He know, they are always wrong, quote, sorry. He noted that the world has already witnessed the use of nuclear weapons and by none other than the Americans. Referring to the Russian nuclear doctrine, Medvedev stated that Russia's commander-in-chief, the president, Putin, can order a nuclear strike in several scenarios, for example, if Russia or its critical infrastructure is targeted by the nuclear strike. Family, it's not in the hand of them. It's not. It's not. It's not in the family. You know we're all about the receipt. We're all about the receipt. Proverbs 21. It says the king's heart, family. The king's heart, your king, your rulership, your president, your prime minister. It says what? It's in the hand of the Lord. Our power, Yahweh. He's the one controlling this movie. It says your heart is in his hands. Listen to this. It says, as the rivers of water, family, he turneth whithersoever he will. If he wants you to attack the West, guess what you're going to do? You're going to attack the West. He says, a man's going is of the most high. How would the man then understand his own way? Paraphrasing, family. We have receipt. It goes to show you that you are not in charge. Let me hit you with Job chapter 33. These precepts continue to come out. Family, I'm just flowing with the spirit. Job 33. Let's show you how powerful our Lord is. He says here in Job chapter 33, verse 14. It says, For the most high Yahweh speaketh once, yea, twice, 
Yet men perceive, perceive it not. Meaning you don't understand it. He speaks to you, but you don't understand it. But this is what he does. He says, verse 50, he says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed, when you are very comfortable, you toss them from one corner to the other, you know what, drooling all over your bed, eh? not knowing what is happening, this is what the Lord does. Then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. You see how powerful the Lord is? You take you in control. So Medvedev can say all he want to say. At the end of the day, it, the Lord counsel will stand. The Lord counsel will stand. So family, they can talk all they want, all they want. That nuclear weapon, the nuclear war, they, are, they were trying to avoid it. They can avoid it because it is written in the book. Ezekiel is written in the book. Somewhere in Ezekiel family. Oh yes, the nuclear war is coming. The third world war, yes, going to be fought with nuclear weapon. That's why we're here to warn you. You can believe it or choose not to believe it and continue to live your life. But the time is short. These nations are getting ready. Oh yeah, they are getting ready. Farming, food shortages. Family, why do you think inflation is so high? Nations are rising up against their own leaders. This is the time that we are living in. This is the last days because the Lord has set a bound for this rulership. And their time has come and it's about to judge the land. That's why you're seeing things the way they are. That's why we're here to warn you. The third world war is coming. But in the midst of that third world war, we are going to be saved. Family, I want to hit you. Let's go through the book of Revelation. The Revelation. Let's read a bit of Revelation and we hit 2nd Ezra and then we'll wrap this up. Family, the third world war is coming. They can control it. Revelation chapter 12. Let's go to verse 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. This meaning on this planet, family. It's not a place up in the air and, you know, no. And then, then, then they said what? And then, the, no, family, the war. This is, this is Esau's heaven. This is his rulership. This is the heaven. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels. That's right. Remember, uh, Dan, the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 tells you, Michael is coming with Yahweh Shai. And the angels, they are coming for war. So the UFO, the so-called UFO, those are the Lord's chariots. They're going to come. And Michael is the head of the army. The heavenly army. The Lord's army. Michael, the archangel, is leading it. He is all about war for the children of Israel. Family, rejoice. Your Redeemer is coming. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which is Esau. And his army. Okay. This rulership. That's going back to the Roman Empire. Family. The whole. The beast system. Came out of the Rome. Greco-Roman Empire. They are the, so this is the last leg of their rulership. They are known as the dragon family. Fought and his. with. Sorry. Let me repeat that. Let's go back. Family. I'm so excited. When it comes to this book family. There's nothing better than this book. I'm telling you family. And that's the honest truth. The peace that it gives you. Who can give you this peace? This is our comforter. Hmm? This is our rest. This is where we find rest. So when everything is happening around us, family, we grab this book and the Lord speak to us. You can't get this from any other thing. Oh no. This is where we find our peace. But family, let's read. It says, and there was a war. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels, meaning their war, their, their armies, family, their missiles, their tanks, they're going to fight. Oh, yes, they're going to fight because family, they already have something called space force. That's why it was created, created in 2019. Because family, these people here, they know, they've seen the angels. They call it the UFOs. They know, family, they know, but they're going to lose badly. It says here. And prevail not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven, meaning on this planet. 
Because family is going to be only, it's only going to take one hour to destroy their army. It says here, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. That's right. That's what they are known for. Called the devil and Satan. They are this representation of Satan on this planet. If that the spirit, all coming back from what? Cain to Esau and family. That's it. That's the word they are known for. The serpent. Serpent is not some, uh, some, uh, some snake that deceived Esau. It was a person. It was a human being. It was, it was a person, actual person. Family, plantation Christianity destroyed us, family. The serpent was talking about was a person. A person. That's Esau for you, family. And called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. When did they deceive the whole world? When they came back into power in, in the 1300, the Renaissance. They removed all our pictures, broke all those images, those classic images. You see some of these uh, statues with their nose broken. But what? They had Afro, right? That's right. They put themselves as what? Yahweh Shai. They gave you white Jesus, right? And they put themselves as the most high. They deceived the entire world. Gave you Christianity, plantation Christianity. That's right. That's why here, this is what the Lord is saying. Family, we have received. It says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. That is his army. That's his army. And family, verse 10. Verse 10 says what? And I heard a loud voice say in heaven, in heaven, now is come salvation. After their armies have been destroyed, family, by Yahweh Shai, Michael, and the, the, Michael the archangel, and all the angels. Verse 10 says what? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power, our king. And the power of Yahamashiach for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And family, the elect, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Family, it's the, the war to end all wars. In the middle of that war, they're going to come. They're going to, family, in the middle of that war, the third world war, our Lord is going to show up in that middle of the middle of the war. And they're going to turn and fight him. They're going to be so afraid, but they're going to fight. Family, let's hit. Let's go. Se Ezra even said it. The prophet Ezra, second Ezra, I think somewhere 13. Let's finish off with that. And I beheld here. Verse 3. It says, and I beheld. And lo, that man walked strong with thousands of heaven. You listen to this? Thousands. The angels that are coming from me, in thousands. You're going to look up and you're going to see all this chariot. There's one that uh, Esau is calling uh, UFOs, family. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things tremble that were seen under him. Family, the entire world is going to be in shock. And when soever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth falleth when it feeleth the fire. Because family, when open his mouth, those are the chariot, the lasers coming out of the chariot. It hits you, you are burning. You're gonna burn to ashes. That's where the Lord is coming. He's coming in the most glorious chariot, family. Let's continue to read a bit of this. It says here, And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men, out of number, from the four winds of the heaven, to subdue the men that came out of the wind, the sea, sorry. So family, you see, a multitude of heaven. These are the nations. Remember, this is the middle of the third world war. They're going to look up, and then what? They're going to see this chariot. They're going to be shocked. They say, what are we doing? Now all these nations that are fighting against each other, now they're going to focus their attention to fight who? To fight the angels and the so-called UFOs. Those are the lost chariots. Let me continue to repeat that. Those are your chariots. The chariots of Israel. 
But, verse 6, it says, But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. When Ezra saw this, Ezra is saying like, Man, this is a mountain. What? This is the size of the king. The king's chariot. Yahawashai's chariot. It was so big that family Ezra compared it to a mountain. Let's continue to read. It says here, But I would have seen the region or a place where out the hill was graven. And I could not. Because here he, he is actually, he was actually thinking, Man, where did he get, where did he get this mountain from? This is the Lord's chariot. The king. Of Israel, the country lion from the tribe of Judah, Yahawashai. This is the his chariot. This is what Ezra is describing. Family. Oh man, this is beautiful. He says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lift up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth. This is coming from the chariot family. As it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue the cast out sparks and tempests. Family, there's going to be all sorts of stuff coming out of those te- those chariots, those la- laser beams, you know, brimstone. Family, you don't you name it. This is the Lord's chariot. It could be anything, family. It could be anything. You're talking about the King of Kings, the Creator of the heaven and the earth. And you think his son is coming like any other? No, is he coming in his glory? Our king is coming in his glory, family. Rejoice, rejoice. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire and the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burned them up, everyone. So that upon sudden of an immune, sorry, innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. You listen to this? Ezra was afraid because everything that he saw, family, when the blast of fire that came out of those chariots, it burned these nations and their armies to dust. That's how Yahawashah is coming. He's not coming to swing sword or no, no, no. This is the king of Israel. He's coming with the angels in a chariot. The so-called spaceship family, if you want to put it that way. Esau calls it what? Calls it uh, UFOs. Family, this is beautiful, man. Verse 12, he says, after, after, Afterward, saw I the same man, talking about Yahushua, come down from the mountain, the chariot, and call unto him another peaceable multitude. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, and some of them were bound, and others, uh, and sorry, and other, some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awoke and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning and hast counted me worthy that thou should receive my prayer. Family, this is what Ezra saw. This is what the uh, prophet, sorry, the angel Uriel revealed to Ezra. The second coming of our Lord. So the woe, woe, woe. Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18, verse 13. They mention three woes. Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. It says one war is past. We know the first world war came and left. The second world war came and left. What make you think the third world war is not going to happen? The Lord, Yahweh shall give us everything to comfort us until he comes. Everything is going to be fulfilled in the book, family. Everything is going to be fulfilled. That's why we give glory to our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Everything is working for us. Be comforted knowing that your Redeemer is coming. The First World War was 1914 to 1918. The Second World War was 1939 to 45. Now the Third World War is coming. And in the midst of that Third World War, our angel, our Lord, our power, 
the angels are coming to get us out of this place. It's going to be just like the Egypt. The Lord is going to pass us over. Meaning he's going to redeem us and he's going to destroy the rest of the nations. Family, this is what we're looking forward to. Let's give honor and glory to our power, Yahweh Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, for not forgetting us. We are in great hands, family. Oh, we are in amazing hands. The Lord is coming for his redeem. So yes, this nation, they can talk all they want. They are just doing the will of our power. Family, I showed you. We are all about receipts here. We are all about receipts. Giving the word out. We don't mention our word. Family, this is, this is, some, we, this is going to, these times that we are living in are going to be some dark times. But we have hope that the Redeemer of Israel is going to pass us over. That's right. The last Passover. And then we go into the kingdom. Or oh, praises, honor, and glory to the King of Israel, Yahweh Shai. First and foremost to our power, Yahweh and his only begotten son, the king of Israel, the redeemer of Israel, the bright and morning star, the prince of peace, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah, the root and offspring of King David. His name is Yahweh Shai. Shalom.